going on guys? Sam Adams here and welcome to The Drop, which is a weekly series I do right here on the YouTube channel every single Monday where I pretty much break down what new video games are coming out over the course of the next week so that you guys can decide if there's anything worth picking up. Uh, we had a break last week to cover E3 2016, which I did pretty extensively and there's an entire playlist of those videos available on my channel. But as for right now, let's go ahead and jump into what new video games are coming out this week. So starting things off, we have Mighty Number no. 9, which by many is considered to be a spiritual successor to Mega Man, and it certainly seems to be uh, lining itself up to be that, because it does have producer Keiji Inafune working on the project, and the entire thing was kickstarted in just two days, meeting its funding goal of $900,000. So needless to say, this is a game that people wanted, and it does seem that the talent is there to make that kind of game a reality. So as the story begins, you play as Beck, who is a member of a group of combat androids known as the Mighty Numbers. Uh, now, a virus does infiltrate the androids, and eight of them kind of turn, and before they can do any real damage, Beck has to go and hunt them down and stop them from doing anything destructive. So that's pretty much the idea behind the story, but obviously this kind of game really does shine through in the gameplay itself. And to be honest, it does appear to play like a regular Mega Man game would. You've got your run, you've got your jump, you've got your shoot, and you've got your dash that does keep things quick and fast paced, but it does have a certain callback to those original Mega Man games that really started it all. So the idea behind Mighty No. 9 is definitely something that I can get behind. It's bringing that original Mega Man experience as far as gameplay and somewhat of the story goes uh, to a new generation of gamers and also bringing a new kind of story, a new kind of gameplay experience to those that are fans of the original Mega Man game. So it's kind of a win-win on that end. That being said, the development cycle of this game has been turbulent to say the least. There have been multiple delays. We don't really know where the Vita and 3DS versions of this game are. Uh, we are getting it on all of the consoles and PC this week. That's PS. 3 PS4, you know, 360, Xbox One, and PC. So it's certainly a large release date for this development team. And my prediction is that they really wanted to uh, bring in as much money and positive publicity on this initial release as they could, and then update us on the Vita and 3DS versions of the game later. That being said, if it sounds like something you might be interested in, it's 20 bucks digitally, $29.99 physically. So if you uh, didn't want to take too big of a financial risk and you still wanted to see what Mighty Number no. 9 was, it's definitely a game that I feel like it's worth supporting supporting just because of the passion behind it, uh, but that being said, it's coming out this week. So next up we have the Tech Romancer coming to the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. So after colonizing the Red Planet, it seems that the colonists' good intentions fell through the gaps. Now Mars is all but a wasteland, leaving Zack, a Tech Romancer with advanced cybernetic implants, to complete his initiation to become a true Tech Romancer, learning to control the destructive powers of electricity. And also throughout the game, you will upgrade your abilities to kind of uh, coincide with the kind of gameplay experience that you want, because within the game, there are a lot of sci-fi RPG elements. So there are four different branches of a skill tree that you can kind of upgrade to shape how you want to start playing the game. You know, if you find yourself being really uh, into the shooting mechanics, then you can upgrade your shooting abilities. If you like your electricity powers, then you can upgrade that branch of the tree. It's that kind of thing. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, there's a lot of third-person shooter mechanics, a lot of RPG mechanics, and it takes place on Mars. That's pretty much all you need to know about this one. So next up, we have Umbrella Core coming to the PlayStation 4 and PC. Now, this is a game that I have seen a lot of mixed thoughts on, and I personally think it looks pretty cool, and I'm probably at least going to give it a rent to see if it is worth getting. Uh, I feel like after the community kind of dies down for this, that's where the game is really going to drop off, kind of in the same way that uh, Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City did, but by all means, this is a game that takes place in the Resident Evil universe and does feature some prominent locations from Resident Evil games in the past, but it is by no means a Resident Evil game. Let me make that very clear. I have seen some people calling this Counter-Strike Global Offensive set in Resident Evil. Pretty much it takes place at different locations throughout the history of Resident Evil, and the idea behind it is that these infiltration teams are going into these locations to try and salvage what research they can find that the Umbrella Corporation left behind whenever they were shut down and kind of stopped doing their thing around 2003. So now the hardcore Resident Evil audience is not keen on Umbrella Core. I'm not even going to try and beat around the bush. They aren't that excited about it. That being said, from an outsider's perspective looking in, there are definitely a lot of people that are like, this could actually be pretty cool. Now, do I think it's going to be a staple of the competitive scene going forward? No. Do I think it's going to stick around for more than I would say between a year and two years? No, I don't think it's going to be alive that long. That being said, I think it's going to be a fun rent at least. I think it's going to be fun for a couple of months while that player base is still 
still alive and thriving. And if they do choose to support this game further on down the line and make more and more content for it and really do put some, you know, effort behind it instead of what I think they're going to do where they're going to release it and then just kind of let it go into the wild, uh, this could potentially be a pretty awesome competitive shooter and I'm excited to at least try it out. And I think you should at least give it a rent and it's coming out on the PlayStation 4 and PC this week. And you can always return it on Steam, I suppose, within the first couple of hours if you don't like it. So why not give it a shot? So next up we have Deadlight Director's Cut coming to the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Now Deadlight was originally released in 2012 on the Xbox Live Arcade and then it was picked up by Steam later on that year because of the success that it did see. And it's pretty much a 2.5 dimensional platformer set in Seattle where you are playing as Randall Wayne who has lost his family during the zombie apocalypse and pretty much the entirety of the story is trying to find them or at least what happened to them. So with the additional power of the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, Deadlight Director's Cut can run a a little bit better than the original Deadlight could on the Xbox 360 or the PC back in the day. Now that being said, there are also a couple of new features coming into the game, which includes a nightmare mode, which needless to say is harder, and a survival arena, which introduces new weapons and tactics, and you pretty much uh, have the goal of staying alive as long as you can, and the longer you stay alive, the higher you go on the leaderboard. So overall, Deadlight Director's Cut just brings the original story, puts a new coat of paint on it, and puts it out on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC, with a couple of little bells and whistles along with with it, so if that sounds like something you're interested in, you might want to check it out coming out this week. So there you guys have it. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of The Drop. If you did, drop me a like down below and share this video so that more people can find my channel. And if you happen to be new to the channel and this is your first experience, hello, go over there and check out some of my other content. I do upload new stuff like three or four days a week, depending on the week. So there's always something new right here on the channel when you drop by to watch some videos. But as always, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching this particular video. I hope you have a great rest of the week and I will talk to you soon. Peace.